Now, Stuart Kaiser is the head of equity trading strategy at City, joins me now. So just doing six, it only took about three years to do 20 to 30. It's now taken, I mean, slightly longer in a sense, to do 30 to 40. Is the Dow rising too fast too soon? Hey Richard, look, I think the view from, from most equity investors is, is that, yeah, valuation does look a little bit extended, but, but frankly, earnings growth has been so powerful in the U.S. and, and large cap U.S. stocks have been sort of a, a white knight for global equity markets that it's kind of justified the move. You know, our U.S. equity strategists have something like double digit EPS growth this year. So I think when you're generating that kind of earnings growth against a strong economy and easing inflation, you're going to get equity markets, you know, rising to, to high, high valuation historically. So, look, there's some questions being asked about valuation, but I think most people would say, given the macro backdrop and given the type of earnings we're seeing, that it, it's pretty well justified. Now, I know the Dow is not, if you will, the trader's favorite. It's 30 stocks. If we bring up the Dow 30, we'll show exactly. It is a broad range of, of, of stocks, everything from Walmart through to Goldman, through to Amazon, which joined only earlier this year. But the P.E. ratio, the price to earnings ratio, bearing in mind it is a price weighted index of those 30. I mean, traditionally it's around that 1920, it's now well over 30. So it does look frothy. Yeah, I mean, I think I think valuations across the market, whether it's the Dow or the S&P 500, you know, they, they do look historically high. And, you know, I think the reason for that, frankly, is is a little bit of a, a scarcity premium. You know, there last year in particular, there was a scarcity of earnings growth globally. Mm -hmm. But large cap U.S. stocks were were the ones that were generating that earnings growth. And I think they've been rewarded for that reason for for relatively high earnings. Um, you know, to your point earlier, you know, there's the potential for rate cuts later this year, which I think is giving people confidence that it might justify that type of valuation. But. You know, no argument, you know, for me, that valuation does look extended historically. Right. Now, I guess ultimately, since, you know, we've been doing this a while and markets go up, markets go down, there's a volatility. Never. It's not so much a question of is there, is there going to be a downturn or whatever. There'll be a correction at some point. I guess I would phrase it as does this 40,000 look fragile? Does it look like it's not standing of very strong foundations? I mean, our view, as I mentioned, is that with solid earnings growth, it gives right. people to kind of to kind of confidence to own it at these levels. I would say that over the last month or so, you know, risk reward has felt not quite as good as it did earlier in the year. You know, we are getting some negative surprises on the economic data side. You had some key stocks early in earnings season, you know, make pretty big moves lower, McDonald's and Starbucks being two of those, Taiwan Semi and ASML being a couple others. So, you know, I, I do think that the foundation for equity markets to us is still pretty solid because we do expect that double digit EPS mm. growth and, and the U.S. economy is holding in well. But we are starting to see some areas where risk reward does not feel, you know, as good as it did, call it eight weeks ago. Uh, Stuart, do you roll your eyes when people like me get excited about the Dow? Because there's so <laughs> many bigger in. I mean, I always think, look, it's the equivalent of putting it's putting it, you know, that's the way the wind's blowing. When I see those 30 stocks, you get a feel for the economy. But the S&P is obviously a much better barometer. Well, I think, I think, I think you know, Dow, maybe because it's a little narrower, has a little bit more animal spirits aspect to it, um, <laughs> as you're mentioning. But, but look, these are, are 30 blue chip, large cap U.S. stocks. So it's not, it's not an insignificant benchmark. You know, I think a lot of portfolio managers and stuff just focus on the S&P because a lot of, of mutual funds are benchmarked to that, right? So right. you're going to kind of keep a, keep a focus on yeah. what you're being judged against. But I mean, if you look at the tickers you have up there on screen, these are, these are not insignificant companies for, for the market or for the economy. I was going to ask you where December 31st the Dow will be. But then I thought to myself, <laughs> if I ask you that, you're going to ask me the same question. And I don't want to answer it. So I suspect you don't either either. <laughs> well, I mean, putting a specific number on it's tough. But I, I can tell you that if we if we don't go into a recession right. and the Fed manages to right. do a couple of insurance cuts, we're going to be a lot higher. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. I'm grateful to you. Thank you very much.